Um, hello, uh, welcome to Budapest, welcome to Flock, welcome to my talk. Um, my name is Merlin Matesius, and I'm a software developer at Red Hat. And this talk is for Fedora package maintainers who are already familiar with the RPM packaging tools um, and are interested in learning about some of the Fedora tooling that is available to help in creating and building modules. And if this doesn't match your demographic, you might want to just take this opportunity to go to another talk or take a nap or get some caffeine. Um, otherwise, welcome aboard. You can stick your carry-on luggage wherever there's room. Uh, make sure your seat backs are up. And um, yeah, the cool safety features in the room here, there, <laughs> we're all good. Um, and, but I would like to ask, uh, try to hold questions to the end and we'll see what we get. So the next, next 20 minutes or so, I plan to give you a brief overview of Fedora modules and the terminology we use when dealing with them. Uh, give you some ideas about when you might want to create one of these modules and highlight a few tools available uh, in Fedora to create and build them. But I am specifically not going to talk about um, the options and the way Fedora modularity is currently designed and the cases when you need to avoid creating a module. That was discussed uh, an hour ago in this room with Adam Shamalik's talk. Did Adam take off? <laughs> yep. um, okay, let's get started with a brief introduction to Fedora mod modules. Uh, modules are simply collections of packages with some extra me metadata. That's the special sauce. Um, and you can imagine that our modules are virtual repositories of packages that are embedded within a master repository that also carries this metadata. Uh, describing the module to package relationships and other per module data such as defaults. And then there's the DNF module commands that know how to handle these package collections with the special sauce. And now to make sure we're all on the same page and using the same terminology, um, let's go through some of the basic terms that I'll keep using in this talk and we'll be, you're going to hear them if you use modules. Um, first is just the term module. That's the logical collection of packages representing something such as an application or a language runtime. And examples of existing Fedora modules are Node.js, MySQL, and Perl. Um, and the stream is the particular version of a module's content, typically locked to a major upstream release of the packages that the module provides. Um, examples are stream names, are like six and eight, which is applicable to Node.js. Um, and latest and devel are commonly used by all sorts of modules. And then lastly, the virgin. Virgin, um, the, there's a lot of confusion around this term. It's overloaded. Streams are referred to as versions. Um, specifically in the module terms, it is the specific, old, specific um, version of, that's assigned by the build system. Um, in the form of a concatenated Fedora release and a time and date stamp. Um, so I said, just be aware that that term is overloaded when you hear module and version together. Make sure you have the right context. I don't want to use the word context because that has meetings and modules too, which <laughs> only cause more confusion. <laughs> um, then the uh, module installation profile is a list of packages representing a specific use case of the module stream. DNF knows about these profiles and it allows you to install a set of packages in a particular module profile just by referring to that profile name. And some commonly used profile names are client and server and minimal. And then here defaults, there's yet another overloaded term. Modules can have default streams. Uh, which is the stream that's used if you don't specify a particular stream. And then each stream can have a default pro profile, which is the same thing with profiles. If you don't specify a particular profile, you get the default profile. And now is also a good time to point out that there is a wonderful Fedora modularity homepage that has all sorts of information, links to documentation, links to the issue tracker, I'll give you the URL at the end of the talk. And I'm going to keep referring to that documentation website. Like, go back there, a lot of information. Okay, so when is it a good time to package things using modules? 
a um, little bit was, dis was discussed last hour with Adam's talk. Um, but basically, like when they're, rather than being stuck with a single version of a package that was shipped with a release of Fedora, uh, modularity solves this too fast, too slow problem that you keep hearing about, um, allowing package maintainers to provide par parallel availability of multiple versions of a package in the form of module streams um, for the same Fedora release. Um, this is useful for developers who need to maintain older versions of software as well as those that are trying to provide the latest and greatest newer versions. Um, and it also allows the same versions to be available across multiple Fedora releases. Um, that's a little bit of a change from the traditional forward marching versions um, in the straight packaging world. However, only one version of a packet or module can be installed at a time. There is no parallel installation of multiple streams. And if you have decided that creating a module is the right thing to do, it's good to know what already exists before you uh, start making your own module. And at the package level, um, DNF repo query, DNF list, and DNF search commands work just as they always have but they also include um, not just the non-modular packages, but the packages coming from default or enabled module streams. And just to see a list of what modules are available, along with their streams, profiles, default streams, default profiles, use DNF module list. Uh, there's more information about that on the modularity documentation page or in the DNF man pages, if you can find them. And as this slide mentions, there's a couple things I'm just going to bring up so you're aware. Um, it's kind of beyond the scope of this, but the Fedora's module build server, build, module build service, and the product definition center have APIs that you can query directly and get all sorts of inter internal information about modules and what they contain. Um, the API, API calls return these blobs of JSON. So you can hack together a script in your favorite language or you can even do it from the command line and use the JQ tool to extract some of the bits. Um, check that out later if you want to do that. The product definition center is literally pdc.fedoraproject.org, cleverly named, yes. Um, so if you did be, do decide to create a module, um, it come down, comes down to identifying a set of RPMs that you want in the module, creating one module MD file for them, and submitting a single build for the entire module. Um, and that builds all the included RPMs for all current Fedora releases. If you were going to do that in the non-modular way, you have to do the RPMs and then submit each RPM build for each current Fedora release over and over and over. And this module MD file is um, a YAML file, defines a module stream, specifies what source RPMs need to be built, and what disk it branches they come from. Um, has like a basic summary, description, licensing information, um, and the information about how the build system is to deal with that and build it, um, such as the Fedora releases that it should build for, the, the order in which to build the packages, um, extra RPM mac macros, and it also lists the installation profile packaging lists. And if you want to see what one of these files looks like, I grabbed the one from the Fedora, Fedora modularity documentation and stripped out the comments, trying to get it on one page. Um, that's not the right R chart. This is the I chart. Um, if you really want to read this, go back to the Fedora modularity webpage. Um, you'll find this full example, full of comments, and picked apart bit by bit telling you what is legal for each thing, and then copy and paste it as a template for building your own module. And when you've got your file ready, it needs to be pushed into diskit, into the module's namespace. Um, need to make sure that the file name you use matches the module name with a .yaml on the end. Um, the repo name also needs to match, match the module name and put it in a branch named after your module stream name uh, so that the build system can find that. 
and remember that documentation website, it explains all this, as well as how to request new diskit repos and branches. Now, if you're converting some existing Fedora packages to modules, um, there's a fedmod rpm to module command that might be worth checking out um, as an alternative to manually copying, pasting, editing uh, the module md file. At the very least, it'll give you a syntactically correct file that you can use as your starting point and start tweaking it. Um, and if you run that, it does some dependency checking and other things, so it's going to crank a while before finally dropping out the file. And whatever means you use to get your module md file, the fedmod lint command will run a syntax check and tell you if you've forgotten any pieces. And there has a few other options that if you just run fedmod, fedmod, it'll tell you about them and I'll give you a link to the documentation at the end of the talk. And there are several types of module builds available. I'll go through them quickly, how they work, um, starting with the standard way. Um, that eventually will allow you to, you know, release your module build and um, send for, for the uh, Fedora repos for the community to enjoy. Uh, standard module builds are simply submitted using fed package uh, with a module build, and you do that from wherever you've put the local clone of the module diskit repo, just like you would do with packages. Um, that submits the module to the Fedora module build server and gives you back a list of numeric build IDs, and if you write those build IDs down, or copy and paste them, and then run fed package module build watch, um, it'll show you the progress of the build, and then when it's done, fed package module build info will give you all the gory details. Um, and then there's also a nice web UI where you don't need to remember all those module build IDs. Um, you can click on the individual builds, it'll show you the components, you can click through on that and find out the status of each one as it's going. And it also keeps track of recently completed ones, just so it's a whole lot easier to use. Okay, now you've finally successfully built your module and you're going to want to use it and check it out. Um, in Rawhide, um, becomes kind of a matter of patience. You need to wait for the next compose to take place, wait for the mirrors to sync, and then you can just use DNF module commands and get right at them. Um, for older Fedora releases, uh, you need to submit the update via Bodhi, just as you would do with non-modular packages, um, but what you need to enter for the candidate build field in Bodhi is a little non-intuitive. Go back to the Fedora modularity documentation website and that tells you how to figure out what to enter there. And then, as with Rawhide, be patient and make sure that your updates testing modular repo is enabled and then the DNF module commands can be used again. And if you don't like all that waiting before you can test out the module, there is the ODCS, the On Demand Compose service. It'll take your module build and create a repo for you just in a matter of a minute or so. Um, if you run the command in that form, it'll spit out, um, it'll list a link to the repo that you can use directly or a, download, a .repo file is also a link that's included in the output. And you can put that in at cm.repos.d. Correct. Once you've got the build, yes. ODCS will compose it for you. Yes. Yes. But you already have to have had it built, and I yeah, forgot to mention install the ODCS client package. It does not release it for you. It just builds yeah. one that you can you can use while you're waiting for Bodhi to do its work or <laughs> all the test, or test before you submit it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. People do that apparently sometimes. Well, that's why it's the testing repo, right? right. <laughs> okay. Now if you just want to skip all that and avoid waiting on the Fedora infrastructure, uh, you can build your modules locally. And there are two types of 
local builds. There are online builds and offline builds. The online builds build on your local system using mock, uh, but they're still querying the getting external package and module information from the MBS and Koji. And if you do an offline version, you have to offline um, make, make a repo that has all of your base packages that your module might need and have that available offline, but that can be useful oh, such as in workshops or when internet connections are unreliable <laughs> or behind firewalls. And then, okay, after you do a local build, you somehow want to reuse that. Um, when you do the local builds under your, your home directory, under module build slash builds, it will drop the, uh, the built module. Actually, as a repo there all ready to go. Um, easy just like to set a shell variable to point to where that's at. Um, you're still gonna need to look in that module builds, module build builds directory and find out what the actual name was because the version gets filled in by the build system and it's kind of tough to guess what that's going to be ahead of time unless you have you know, down to the second guessing timing. Um, and then the DNF using the repo from path options. If you've used those before, you just point it at that uh, local directory, enable it, and but you have to do that every time you use the DNF command or create a repo file and let's see yum.repos.d point into that and then you can just use it without having to fill in the extra options every time. And then there are also scratch module builds that we're just asking about. Um, they're done in the Fedora infrastructure. They're somewhat analogous to scratch package builds in that they don't quite count as an official build and you can never release them. Um, they do also have the benefit that you can use a module MD YAML file that you haven't pushed into Diskit yet um, so you can kind of check it out um, in the front row. Can you use a VCS on a scratch No. At least not yet, unless somebody's working on that one. Uh, so, yeah, you're, you're going to get to the problem here that I was going to point out momentarily. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there was a question also here moments ago. Um, eventually, you'll be able to specify RPMs that haven't been pushed to Fedora's disk yet um, by specifying custom SRPMs on the scratch build command line. Uh, but there's currently a fix waiting in the Koji pipeline that it's been committed. It just hasn't been pushed out to the infrastructure yet that should get that working. Um, and monitoring the builds is done the same way because they are done by the MBS. Yes. Okay. It's just there's synonyms. You can do the same thing when you're doing package builds. You can say, you know, fit package, scratch build, or build dash dash scratch. It, it's the same thing. So, so that's basically the same as normal module build instead of the tagging. So the tagging is not. Yes, the tagging isn't. Yeah, it doesn't go through the final processes of, uh, what is it, uploading? Yeah. <laughs> It, it skips all the final steps. And it's kind of specially namespaced. That it isn't called module dash, it's SCR mod dash for the for the tags that it does do. And so. the OVCS would work with this scratch? It doesn't know how to. <laughs> it won't be. It There's no ODCS, yeah. So unfortunately, yes, using the artifacts from a scratch module build is kind of tedious. You can go through the, uh, the process, you know, create a uh, directory, um, get the build info, let's see, you have to down, download all the packages that you just built uh, with a Koji download. Um, then you have to grab the, uh, uh, as you build a module, the, your module MD file gets augmented with build information that you can download that manually from the PDC, strip out just the module MD file, drop that into your directory, create a repo from it. Um, you'd also need to manu manually remove any RPMs that were filtered out by your module MD, um, and then add that module MD file back to the repo. It's, it is quite a pain. <laughs> 
Um, but then you can use that directory just like the local module builds from the previous slide. So the biggest benefit is just being able to run a build before you push things to disk yet and see if they're going to work. Um, gives you a few, a few iterations to uh, fix things before having to updating like the release ID every time over and over. Okay, and that is all I have for you today. Hope you found something new and useful. Um, here's the links I promised, the Fedora Modularity homepage there at the top. Um, that has, as I said, links to the issues and documents. Um, there's the direct link to the documentation. If you forget to, you ought to bookmark it if you're going to be working with modules, and if you forget, just type Fedora Modularity in your favorite search engine, and it's going to be one of the first few hits. Um, FedMod that I mentioned, there's where its source and documentation is. And then on IRC, if you are stuck and need help, get the Fedora-Modularity Fedora channel on Freenode, and you'll find a lot of people there smarter than me that can probably answer it for you. <laughs> so, but now, any more questions? Yes? the scratch builds are actually using the MBS infrastructure. It will build across all the architectures. Um, that, that's kind of their, their real purpose. It's using the same server, um, but they're just the... It, it is using the regular build process, mm -hmm. except for the final phases of actually composing it ready to, to get pushed out with the caveat that the custom packages just isn't working yet. So for, for the test thing, I would really use scratch builds yeah. and just let's, let's work with one thing. In this case, what we have. Yes. Um, well, FedMod does the build. Yeah. ODCS takes that build and does a compose for you. Uh, it, it gives you a repo that you can then use. Otherwise, it's like if you just build the module, it's somewhere in Koji. There's just pointers to it. There's tags. There's no actual repo that you can just pick the module back out again. So ODCS turns that into a repo, and then you can just point DNF at it, and it kind of looks like it's already in the repos, just an extra one. So, yes. Um, scratch module builds are expecting to have an actual file. You say scratch module build dash dash file and then the YAML file. Yeah, but which you could it, check out from the branch that is the PR. <laughs> you mentioned you're doing like yeah, a PR in the module, you check that out and then on the command line specifically point to that path in the local checkout. Yeah, but Yes. And so if I'm pointing not to the main repo where it's like our RPM code is located, but if I'm pointing to the fourth repo which I have elsewhere, will it work? By elsewhere, you mean elsewhere in this kit or completely elsewhere? But fourth in Fedora. So okay. it, uh, it wouldn't work in Fedora because Koji has restrictions regarding pointing from this kit or in some yeah. specific yeah. Yeah. In that case, you might need to check out those packages. <laughs> Build a source RPM from that, and yeah, then yeah, hand it, yeah, hand it the whole thing. You are suggesting as an option the possibility to build from SRPMs, but I don't really want to create SRPMs. Yeah, I, I have set a pull request, which means I have forks of my RPM packages, yes. and I have branches in those forks, and I want to appoint my model uh, YAML actually to those branches or packages and build from this book of 
Sounds like a, an enhancement request. Yes. <laughs> Great discussion. Okay. <laughs> I think we need to wrap things up here. Um, so thank you for attending. Thank you.